All right, my friends, we're going to do this. World Elite vs. Cloud9, coming at you directly from Lippstadt, a small town in Germany. Of course, only this video is coming at you from Germany. They're playing over at Chi in China. Team World Elite. I think Team World Elite is a team that is underrated coming into this one. Everyone's saying C9 will win, C9 will win, easy, easy, C9. Team of the lead, they were fantastic there in group stage. They dealt with our heroes very well. They dealt with our heroes' misfits. They had a fantastic group stage. I think draft-wise, they were also ahead of the curve. I think, um, in general, Team of the lead was fantastic. Cloud9, on the other hand, you know, I think... Um, they were drafting quite unorthodox, and I think they ran into a lot of issues. You know, they were drafting the Graves, the Ezreal, and I think that was a big problem for them because it it it, it was noticed like in the SKT game that they couldn't execute properly in that game. But then the next game, they just instantly went for that Gragas jungle, and all of a sudden it was a different game. But um, I don't know, I feel like the, the champion picks that uh, C9 is going with, it doesn't really facilitate the Graves and the Ezreal, and uh, I think uh, whenever Impact is against the split pusher, he runs into a big problem. But this time around, you know, uh, where the late, the bad Ezreal, uh, C9 picked up the Jarvan themselves. Usually they, they did this thing where they gave up Jarvan, and then they just, uh, you know, straight up, uh, <coughs> they straight up just freaking... Uh, pick Graves into it. Let's just uh, see how it goes. I feel like uh, World Elite is definitely underrated coming into this one. World Elite. Ooh. C9 just straight up picked Caitlyn. Hoo hoo. Alright. It's very likely that um, C9 will just uh, pick Lulu third. And then they got the, a good draft going on for themselves. I think uh, Caitlyn Soraka is also a possibility, but uh, Lulu is more premium than that. World Elite hovering Gragas, Ejwani is banned, so Gragas is the most likely pick. I think Gragas Janna will do very well against the Jarvan, the Disengage. Look at that win rate of Kagma, man. He is one sad popper. Curious to see where this uh, Jarvan goes, if Impact is going to play it, or Contract is going to still play it. Crazy junglers. I'm not too big of a fan of his crazy junglers. I think it could be potentially C9's downfall. Because whenever they're behind, it's um, it's a tough one. But sure, you know, on paper against all these junglers, you should be able to get ahead. But this is not the meta to get ahead on junglers. Kony has played fantastically, like low economy. And he's been able to pressure the sidelines at right times. I like C9's uh, approach here that they take away the Kaelin and Lulu because a big part of World League's success has been the pushing bottom and Condi walking down there and throwing barrels. <laughs> throwing barrels and pressuring with Sejuani and this type of stuff. Jace Bained, Nar Bained, Impact was successful with that Nar. I think this is uh, most likely uh, Jarvan Top Dome. I'm not completely sure, but might be the case. When it comes to C9, you know, it's hard to predict uh, what they will pick in the jungle. Maybe they solved their issue. I think it's definitely an issue how it's gone at the last days. I like the Lucian ban. I think it's a very likely that World Elite are going to blind pick a, a top laner that is AP damage. Nara's out and Jace is out, so it's hard to blind pick a physical damage top laner. Unless World Elite... Uh, just uh, pick Poppy here. And then in terms of mid laners that do physical damage, Lucian and Jace is out. So World Elite is going to land here on a composition that has a lot of magic damage. It's going to be a big deal. I'm hoping C9 just picked their jungler here. Then last pick mid. Syndra is also banned. Oriana is also banned. Rise would be the pick if anything. Okay. I like this Shin top lane. C9 have a very strong early game comp and they don't fall off necessarily in the later parts of the game. The only worrying part here is that World Elite and their combo can be 
very denying of this Jarvan Shen gaining any entrance uh, towards the right people. I think uh, Koma is very well protected, but one thing to point out with Leeds, uh, like with this draft, that how it went and how Cloud9 banned, and then with Leeds also banning Nar. <laughs> it really, really puts C9 on um, like a pedestal because they are going to buy MR a shit ton of it and they're going to be happy. Even though Ninja Tabi is quite good against this team. Running Soul. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Let me look at this. Aurelion Soul. I'm loving it, man. Look at C9's comp, man. They're so strong early. They can win everywhere. It is quite nuts, man. It is... This this is really good. I think uh, together with the comp they have, they can snowball this to space. It is not necessarily that Aurelian Soul falls off either. I think um, uh, Aurelian Soul can be a menace in the mid late game because he's gonna can, he's he's allowed to itemize a bit tankier than others. He can itemize some MR and Ninja Tabi and uh, still be very effective on the the damage front. And Kaelin Lulu, if they get an advantage and they're ahead of. Uh, Jana Kogma, then they can definitely do great things. So I'm a big fan here of C9's uh, composition. Or the leads, I think um, uh, they are going to play a game where they cannot fall behind. A lot of pressure here on Kondi to make sure that uh, his laners are safe. I think World the leads, uh, they they want to look for opportunities to lane swap in the game and look for opportunities to accelerate the game if um, if the possibility is presented to them. I think uh, right off the bat, I think C9 have the better draft, they have the more mixed damage, they have the stronger lanes, and they have the pushing lanes. So I'm a big fan here of what C9 have done. Aurelian Soul is going to facilitate, it's great. You know, I think, um, you know, considering what mid lanes were out, you know, Syndra and Oriana, I think Oriana probably would have also been a great pick, but Oriana was banned, right? And uh, when Oriana is out... Uh, only low range mid laners are left in the picture, meaning Rise and Cassiopeia. And playing that against this team, you know, good luck. Playing that against Choga, Gragas, Kogma, it's too hard. It's way too hard. It's um, you can't play a low range mid laner against this. And Aurelian Soul has his has his stars spinning around, you know. So that's great, you know. I just want to check how far away I'm from life. I'm Five minutes away from live. No biggie. Voices of Jad, Papa Smithy, and Pastry Time. Brought to you by Acer Predator. Play the game. Live the game. So once again, you know, C9 are going to play this pushing game. And um, Corky with the TP is going to be able to respond to it. Like, Corky is not that bad against Aurelian Soul. Corky's going to get pushed in. Kuri's gonna get pushed in the early levels. Revanche is gonna be fine. Impact's gonna buy out and sensor. He's gonna ult and shield people and give them attack speed. Obviously, I'm not serious. Interesting now. C9 they just look for an opportunity to get a deep ward. I like this. I like this a lot. You know, they're just um, not taking any risk here either. They are like most enemies showed up. Under standard spots, and um, with this being said, you know what uh, what Javan did here. It's very very little risk because no one's gonna stand there. Like no one has ever stood there. Just sure, an invade has has come from top side into that, but um, C9 waited for a long enough timing for it to be okay. Contracts also with this ward could potentially just invade the blue buff. Jensen with his bowels just uh, swinging away with them in Shia's face. Shen did ward his own blue buff though, so let's see now if uh, what Contracts does. His move, Condi saw the red buff, got a leash. C9 is well aware. Okay, Contracts just checked the wolves in case he's there, and he's not, meaning he can pick this up, but uh, Condi is well aware. The ward from Shen doing a lot of work. Let's see now if Kaden Lulu can push this hard enough to actually contest this, but uh, by the looks of it, Condi should be fine to just grab it away. 
Gunzi is uh, very happy. Oh, 957, not happy. Impact is uh, out trading him. This is uh, usually what we see in this matchup, but uh, not this heavily. Uh, Shen has some very powerful trading early on. And with his passive and his Qs. Now, Shen as a, as a laner is quite strong early. Gentleman with the standard uh, base a three wave. Usually, you base a two waves, I think, before the cannon and you push it in. Uh, he seemed like he was able to push in the cannon as well, so it doesn't seem like an issue here. Contracts smacking away. But we're crazy here. Like, Kondi just peaced out. Like, he just peaced out. Something that I uh, didn't highlight, like, already on Soul. Didn't base on this wave, instead he was just walking and defending his own jungle, so this was absolutely beautiful. I was talking about the standard base of Aurelian Soul, but he just doesn't base and just walks towards his own jungle. And uh, Kaden Lulu, also with some type of priority here, they are, have the space to move and Kondi is just forced out. And This is amazing, you know, so far so good, C9 are using their strength and I think this was um, classic C9 in the sense that I remember screaming them at uh, Worlds last year. They were also using like their champion limits uh, in terms of invading very well. I, I remember they're playing Graves and level one invading and forcing like a one v one. This was a time where every jungle started at golems, and starting golems was the best shit, the good shit. And uh, <clears throat> currently, you know, currently, contract is uh, super far ahead. Let's see how much it matters, you know, jungling and all, being ahead in jungle, illegal. <laughs> No, but no, right now it actually matters a lot, you know, it matters. Contracts might even reach level 4 before Kondi reaches level 3. There we go, level 4 contracts. He's also going to farm away his bottom side camps and Kondi is going to pick up his golems here. He has enough vision and he spotted contracts uh, walking towards bottom side, so he's completely safe doing this. It's going to be interesting to pay attention to top side here if Impact is actually going to get ganked, because Impact is going to use his... Uh, like taunt aggressively and 957 has already been in base he tp back to lane so he has an item advantage health advantage and uh this could be a time for Kondi to come in and punish the wave might be a bit too big and 957 might be able to just uh aggressively push this in but uh, impact is uh, pretty deep here let's see impact if he can do some dancing let's see if he can do the safety dance oh he gets a taunt Kondi doesn't e Kondi with the lack of a trigger finger. But uh, to be fair, you know, 957 already uses Q and Q was on cooldown, W was on cooldown. Uh, I think uh, Impactovic could have been just fine. But uh, maybe Impact could get Dovin up here. Like he's really low and Contracts is very separated from him because he went to the bot side and took his bot side camps. Let's see what uh, Wordleet is going to make off of this. Kondi doesn't have a lot of camps to take for himself and. This is a big ass wave Impact is gonna lose, but uh, Impact has confidence here. Oh no, oh no, Pollo Loco. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh my damn. Oh, all right. So, first and foremost, you know, this this e miss right here is, is a big deal. You know, Condi is a raging alcoholic with this one. <laughs> I, if, if this. If this doesn't miss, you know, then all of a sudden Gragas is the one with aggro and Knife of Seven is not in such a ugly position here and Kondi could actually just use his flash out. And um I think this would have uh, made Knife of Seven live, you know. And um you got the TP coming in and Aurelian Soul also moving quite fast. But Corky getting kills like this is very good for his matchup. He's very happy. Oh, the sneeze! I didn't even realize he got level 6, man. Like, the wave was so big. And he, like, I really so good all the CS. I didn't realize he got level 6. I was just seeing top lanes being level 4. Uh, Jensen picks up a kill, and then he walks towards the wave. His balls are swinging. And I think it, it looks like this is his plan. Like, this is his plan. He's just CSing, and then he's getting it. Boom, pow, sneeze. Achoo! 
good stuff. Good stuff. So equalizes the kill. We're talking about how important it is for Koki to get ahead. But this is a big deal here. Shen is gonna reach level six, and the roams in the bot lane is gonna start happening. You know, like uh, sneaky can also base for his BF, but he's just chipping away at the bottom tower. And C9 are lucky, man, because it's Infernal Drake. C9 can snowball this and use the comp even even heavier here at level six. Together with Michael Jarvan, that dunking bottom. I think uh, the 2v2 potential of uh, Aurelian Sul is pretty strong. I think it's uh, the comparison to Talia is that he actually has an ultimate and he has some like easier CC to land. Corky no flash. Uh, could be trouble for him. Condi is also still uh, quite far behind and Contracts and Jensen can definitely pressure through mid lane into their bot side jungle. They're pinging the red buff right now and. Uh, Jensen and Contracts are very strong right now. Kondi is still behind, level 5, just dinged it, and uh, Contracts are is trying to snowball this as hard as possible. I love the fact that he's buying Cinderhawk. Uh, I love the fact that Contract is showing something else than this Graves and Ezreal, and I'm happy that this um, this is working out for them. I feel like this was a big issue for them, this Graves and the Ezreal crap. Like, it was, it was, it was okay, like, he didn't play it bad. You know, this was Contracts not playing it bad, but... I just feel like it's way too risky. It's way too risky to play, and the current meta junglers are hard to punish. But now, nowadays, or nowadays, in this game, is working out here for contracts. Aurelion Soul not coming down. Uh, no items on enemy bot lane. Condi is very low. Balls are swinging. Shen Ultimate is coming in. Ben and Mystic are under the turret. C9 are gonna stomp this. Holy moly. This is such a snowball here. Contracts being so far ahead, and then. Just going for the dive on bottom, and then, you know, on top side, the timeout is doing work, and World Elite are getting, they're getting smackerooed, they're getting smacked, man. Holy moly! See now, also gonna pick up the Infernal Drake. I love the fact that Shen and Javan are doing it because Kane and Lulo just want to maintain priority and tempo by just walking up top side. And my goodness. My goodness, C9 executing the composition. But to be fair, like, what will World Elite do here? They don't have any lane to play to. Uh, Shen is super fed. Like, Shen is beefy as all hell. And he's not going to be able to be pressured that much. Kondi got caught with his pants down, went to bottom side. And then Corky with no TP, no flash, was pushed in on his tower. Contract with the temple. Like, Kondi's still level 5. He's trying to pick up the Grompovich to make sure that he catches up in XP. But uh, Kondi level 6 now. Contracts is walking in, and 957 is very low now. Contract is coming in, but Kondi is in position, so it's all good. I think Contracts needs to find the approach again where he plays through mid lane. It's not time yet for C9 to ram their fist into the enemy's mouth and break their spine. They need to wait for some ultimates here. Shen ultimates is going to come up, and Jensen is super fed now. He's super, super fed. He's gonna have like the 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 snowball machine soon. So as it stands right now, yeah, World Elite have very little options to to get pressure in this game. World Elite are playing the surviving game and it's all about cutting the losses at this point in time. Like C9 is super far ahead. They are 3.4k gold ahead, and that's a massive lead at this point in the game. You know, they are losing every lane matchup as is right now and um if anything, you know, it's hard for World Elite to create something through mid lane because against this Shen, you know, it's, it's so, super difficult, super difficult. And on top of that, you know, uh, the entire team of World Elite is just suffering. Crazy stuff. Loving the draft on C9. Very quick paced. Loving the Caitlyn blind pick. That was that was some confidence, some some testicles right there. Contrast is waiting for the Shen ultimate to pop up and just uh, doing the Rift Herald as we speak. Kondi is forced to be so inefficient because he's, sit he's just sitting up on top tower. You know, he's doing the same thing as he does when World League is pushing, but uh, <laughs> this time around it's reverse. He's, ha he's forced to do the defensive play. The moment he walks away, uh, the ball lane is super exposed and the tower just uh, just falls here. Ragas walks away, Jaren goes for the base, and Adansense is ready, but but Smoothie has been rich, you know, for a long time, and he's he's been 
shooting away with his Arden sensor for a long time, this, this scale right here. <clears throat> I feel like C9 definitely took uh, the evolution of the draft in, in a good direction. I feel like these mid laners that can push and roam are fantastic. You know, we saw Galio having a lot of success. Galio was banned in this one. Talia was still available, but uh, you know the way the way Galio impacts this, the way Aridian Soul impacted this. You know, he was a mid laner that could just roam into top side. Means a lot. Rift Hell is gonna tackle it. Boom. Condi's in the mix. Impact is also trying to taunt in. C9 are happy with the, getting the mid lane tower. Of course, they should be happy. You know that is that is why Rift is in the game is to take mid towers and break the enemy's base. C9 just need to continue playing this game where they push in even further and then rotate between the lanes. They need to maintain vision uh, in the enemy jungle and the. Enemy, squ uh, enemy quadrants right here. Uh, I think uh, the way they need to play it is just uh, contracts goes uh, through mid lane or top side, goes and puts a lot of deep vision, and then they continue onwards. C9 just needs to keep pushing all the lanes, maintaining vision, and then rotating in between, forcing the enemy team to also rotate but uh, more poorly and just be one step ahead at all times. Something we need to pay attention to is when World Elite, they spike when they get some items. If, um, you know, if Kogma reaches Ginsu, all of a sudden, uh, World Elite might have like an opening to create something because Ginsu is such a big spike. So this is something we need to pay attention to. I think this could be like a window in, like uh, some of these item spikes for Korki and Kogma are very huge. But as it stands right now, C9 are in a dominant position and I'm trying to find like reasons and ways for Wildly to actually get in here and come back in the game. But as it stands right now, you know, it's uh, it's one of those, you know, Indiana Jones doors, you know, he needs to get through and he needs to, they need to like glide in. It's the, the, the window opportunity is super small. Let's see if uh, Wildly can slide and impact also shitting on Choga with uh, with Shen, which is also a big deal. You know those kills go a long way. No righteous glory finished yet. Not that it would have changed the matchup. I think Titanic Hyra is a huge buy, and eventually, you know, we're gonna see some MR pop up here. And uh, the issue of with Leeds composition, the fact that they have so much magic damage, is also gonna be a problem that will be very apparent as soon as. C9 are gonna buy some Spectre's Cowl here, and uh, we'll just have to see. Jensen has had a fantastic performance in this uh, in this tournament, and that has usually been the case for for Jensen. You know, I think um, after this tournament, definitely, I, I can understand more views of uh, like I can understand the view of Jensen being better than. Bjergsen now, I can understand it more because before this tournament I thought it was baffling to, to think so so uh, I'm just thinking how they matched against each other in most of the games they played and uh, Bjergsen always always uh, most of the time like came out ahead and I think that means a lot you know in the head to head matchup but um, Bjergsen definitely like domestically is, is a monster and then internationally I don't know, it's hard to point to just Bjergsen because TSM have uh, problems as a team. They're just playing... like They're, not, they're just play, playing very reactive. Uh, that's what that's TSM's problem. And look at C9, they're playing proactive and all of a sudden the, the balls are in the enemy's court. Or it isn't. Whichever way you, you see that. Alright, so all of a sudden we see Ginsu's Rage Blade, Sneaky losing some HP. Rageblade with Arden Sensor is popping off, doing a lot of damage. Sneaky with Arden Sensor is also life stealing back. Look at that Arden Sensor. Look at that Arden Sensor. Oh, Arden Sensor. Oh, Arden Sensor defended Mystic right there. Sneaky with his Arden Sensor. Seeding up. Seeding up. Attack speed now on the turret. 
four people grouped up not too bad of a situation for the lead maybe they can deal with the minion wave they should be able to they have got the corky c9 can also do a rotation into mid lane but at the moment a lot of people are rotating into the top side c9 should disperse potentially they could get the next wave and you know, there's there's still a lot of time for the elite until the Baron comes online, and that's where uh, a lot of things can turn sour for them. Jensen doing the the reverse swooperu here. He's uh, going from top side into mid lane into bot lane, knowing that the enemy team needs to do a slow rotation. But Condi did the smart thing of going into base and going going bottom. Condi has a sharp eye here for where the dives might happen and where the plays might happen, and it's important that uh, uh, that Condi does this because. You know, that could have been a Choga kill, and uh, they had had eyes open, and they spotted uh, Dowry and Soul uh, roam into bottom. So the main thing is, like, C9 just need to keep pushing the waves and keep being light on their feet, you know, just keep bouncing on your knees, you know, like a boxer, you know, to hop back and forth, you don't want to stand still, and uh, make sure that uh, World Elite also need to move after you, because right now they're chasing points. Now imagine, imagine C9, they won a couple of rounds, and they got the pace. And uh, World Elite just need to catch up now. And World Elite, once again, they have this composition that scales very well into the game. So C9 slowing down here is is a sign of uh, weakness, so to say. We saw similar matchups uh, go like this uh, yesterday. When Fnatic uh, played against World Elite, I mean, Fnatic played against um, RNG, which is like World Elite Deluxe. RNG uh, also loved that the game was slowing down, they were just chilling, the Twitch all of a sudden got items. And uh, breaking the base is, is a different thing to do, you know, if, uh, if the enemy team is playing the defensive game well and Condi is on point where he needs to be. And so far so good. <laughs> It's the, it's the wake up yawns coming at you live. <clears throat> so it stands right now, C9, I feel like they should be able to with the uh, with the mid waves they're getting, I feel like uh, the moment they spot Gragas on top side, they should just look for the opportunity to rotate into mid lane here with Caitlyn and Dulu. Oh, Snick Snack, Boom Pow, Mystic with the flash contracts finding an opening. Good stuff here. Mystic's quite low, but the Arden Sensor popping off. You know, look at him go, look at him go, yeah, oh yeah. C9, I feel like they just need to do this rotation into mid lane. They're spotting these, this bot lane of Kogma and Janna always top side. And what C9 need to do, I think it's a bad position here for Sneaky to be in. He can't really walk into Kogma. And all of a sudden, the Kogma is starting to pop off. Some strength is showing off here. And whoa, 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 whoa. Righteous Glory doing work. Sneaky is in deep. Whoa, okay. And all of a sudden, the game is looking different. World Elite are back in it. World Elite have a cannon wave now to push into the mid lane tower. And, you know, I feel like a big issue here for C9 is the fact that Kogba Janna is actually stronger than Caitlyn Lulu. They're actually stronger. So. If Caitlyn Jan Lulu did the rotation I suggested into mid lane, that is going to be very hard for Cena to come back because they lose the 2v2. So really, if they take like a aggressive stance from top side, then Caitlyn is not gonna be able to come back. But then again, like if if, if Kogma and Janna stay top side and Cena know it, they can just make a full rotation into bot side and just start hitting turrets. I just feel like they need to be more flexible in their movement and C9 right here. Uh, you know, like if, if C9 just rotate into mid and then uh, maybe you send Arlene Soul and Jarvan into bottom, pressure the Choga, pressure the tower, I feel like the game would have been a bit different and more accelerated here. 
but um, C9 put themselves between a rock and a hard place by showing up here, and then they can't really walk up to the lane. I don't know what they were trying to do here. Like this was, this was city. This is Kai City. Like right now, they should be clearing the mid wave, and Aurelian Soul should be pressuring bottom together with Jarvan, and uh, then it would have been better. Then Kogma Jana being topside wouldn't matter. You know, the same way Fnatic kited the Kogma yesterday, you need to kind of kite him in the lane phase as well, because he doesn't push waves that fast compared to other things. He doesn't have a hurricane and boom pow. You know, W. WE here, uh, start off uh, start off with uh, like a team fight here uh, instead of anything else happening from C9. Jensen gets smacked. Jensen could have flashed out earlier, and all of a sudden, you know, the game is gonna be tough now for C9. You know, sure they have that gold lead, but uh, will it? It's crazy. Will it? You know, with their comp. They're gonna reach items now. Come was gonna be have enough most likely for Hurricane, and that's gonna be a big deal. Like he's gonna do a lot of damage, and it's going to be quite hard for Cena to just kill him. But Mystic still doesn't have Flash, so it could be an opening. But uh, Will Elite do have the disengage tools, and uh, a big problem always has been with Kogma is that he is kiteable, and I think um, the same approach needs to be taken uh, in uh, the mid game when. You push in waves, you just want to avoid trading with Kogma and um, keep yourself flexible and moving. I think C9 was standing still a bit too much and uh, uh, World Elite eventually found an opportunity here where we're sneaky overextended. Aurelian Soul was in mid lane catching a wave, Lulu was getting chunked. Boom, the package, crit as well from the Coco. Jana Ultimate heals up Shia. Yeah, I learned how to pronounce his name. Fuck yeah. Condi with the ultimate. Beautiful. Jensen should have flashed though, but maybe it wouldn't matter. I like having uh, Caitlyn and Lulu in mid lane uh, a lot more than having Erlen Sol there. Because I feel like Caitlyn and Lulu can do more in mid lane against potential enemies because in this long lane on top then Kogma can go for those trades, extend the trades and Caitlyn can control the, sm the narrow space that is mid lane uh, a bit better with her traps and so this is always the problem you know with Kogma uh, well playing against Kogma if you're even in mid game then Kogma is going to be a, a big issue and um, Caitlyn's gonna spike again at 3 items but as of right now, Kogma is stronger. Jensen is super far ahead in XP, which matters. And, uh, C9 are still uh, like in a, in a in a position where they can do things, right? They just need to start. They just need to be mobilized. They need to be mobilized. Make sure that they farm better than the enemy team. Make sure that Kogma is in a team fight scenario. This is good. Forcing World Elite to. Whoa, 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 good stuff, good stuff, but the Jano Ultimate is massive. Holy moly, out of the sensor, guys. Let's take a look at that again. So it becomes kind of a different game when Baron is online, like, uh, we'll at least need to start fresh taking bushes and uh, things like that, you know, they, they ain't got no blue trinkets right here, and they lost to mid-wave, and... Um, they just need to face check here to to make sure that uh, the enemy team is not doing Baron. Maybe this is not the right path to do it. But C9 get the good engage on to Condi. Condi is quite low, but the Jana ultimate is so huge. Like the Ma Jana ultimate is crazy big. Impact decides to TP instead of channeled. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe you should have just channeled the contracts. Maybe it wasn't on cooldown. Yeah, it's still, it shows up right here, so. The timing was a bit off. He, he gets his cooldown back now. So he just starts TPing to the Javan flag and back in the mix. <clears throat> Quite a decent situation considering C9, they pushed in bottom wave before it happened. So C9 are farming more efficiently. <laughs> 
world elite understand that as long as they maintain Baron Vision, then everything should be fine. Then they can scale safely into this game. The only thing they need to be scared of is C9 just taking a free Nasher, nothing else. In fight scenarios where leads are quite fine, they are quite strong, they are quite happy. The main thing is that um, on top of that a lot of magic resistance is starting to show up now on C9 side, so that is going to be very effective against uh, world leads picks. Kaelin Lula on top lane again, hopefully Kaelin Lula is just going to push in this wave and then rotate again and then force someone to show up top and then Aurelian Solo goes, goes top again. This is what we have to hope for here. Rylize is finished. Would have, would have loved to see a Banshee's Veil on uh, the soul here. But maybe he's itemizing towards Leandri's Torment right now. I think buying Void stuff is a bit too early. And this Torment is a great item on on the soul, especially if you itemize like this, if you buy the snow machine and you buy Rylai's, you're like made for the Andrew's Torment. Sneaky's also approaching his uh, third item, which is going to mean a lot. Corky is roaming down bottom to grab that kill. His Corky TP is going to come up soon and I don't know if this is uh, this is possible here. Impact could just flash over the wall. Doesn't go for it. Arian Soul is quite fast. Supports Impact in this. Jan and Kogma are also moving from mid lane and C9 just starting Baron. Impact could TP, but uh, yeah, it's a bit too much to ask for to do the Baron here, but uh, at least we're really panic. <laughs> they panic and they are under the assumption that uh, C9 are doing it and well it TP straight back home she does cancel it though but uh, it doesn't matter too much he's gonna go up top top lane and he's gonna play the split push game or he's gonna go in mid and he's gonna be close to Nasha he's just not gonna have that possibility to get chunked out and TP back and also roam into bottom and TP to defend Nasher. So that possibility is dead now for impact and I mean for all the leads here. So impact doesn't need to be scared. I like the choice of Aegis here. A lot of HP on impact already and it's gonna be a big ass shield. Something that could be interesting right here is if uh, Cloud9 decide to just go for Banner of the Coco, Banner of Command, I think Banner of Command could be juicy here against uh, the enemy team. Well, they don't kill it that fast, and it could be like a good thing. You know, Impact could place it in the Cho'Gat lane, and it's gonna punch away at it, and then Corky is not gonna do any damage too. And well, they just try to maintain this uh, equilibrium while they where they are grouped and. Uh, they maintain vision of a Baron, and then just like this, they're going to scale into the game, and it's going to do later, 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 forcing C9 to group. Javan's taking a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Good sneeze, though. Good sneeze. Ban is doing great Janna ultimates because he's getting the full healing, and that matters so much. But uh, contract gets melted down. It's hard to run into this team. This team has a lot of damage, but a stun lands on Mystic, and Arden Sans is heating up so much because of Hurricane. Holy moly. It's crazy how much it heals from, from the Ardent Sensor. But the World Elite now, with those kills, are going to be able to run towards Nasher. And it's such a big deal here that uh, World Elite are playing to their win condition fantastically. You know, they, they don't give a fuck about gold leads or gold numbers. or They don't let it get in the way of how they are approaching the game. Because World Elite, you know, after they reach against his Rage Blade, all of a sudden their team fighting potential went through the roof. And uh, 
when that happened, you know, we got, we got that first team fight win for Team World Elite where they caught C9 off of Baron, and all of a sudden, uh, right here, C9 are in the group state, and the flag lands and contracts is just way too deep. Like, look at Corky eating at him and removing his armor and MR. And then everyone just chugging away at him. Like, he has a lot of MR, right? But uh, it's just not enough because World well, Elites have so much upfront damage. And then Ben does these ultimates all the time where he fe heals completely. Like, this is a healing for about 800 on each target. This is reden redemption times two, you know. It's, it's massive how much it heals. And then we have the CC combo here on, on Mystic. But look at how much the Arden Sensor is just healing him. Right here, the Hurricane procs. The Hurricane procs together with uh, his W and his Arden Sensor. They're just healing way too much. And Mystic manages to survive that. And Mystic is an AD carry that had a rough start to the group stage. And didn't really live up to his hype. I mean, to his uh, play-in. But then in group stage, he popped off in some of those games against Misfits and TSM. And then, you know, World Elite just uh, getting getting the ball rolling here. Right now, you know, it's looking very rough for C9 to have the composition that is going to fall off. And we got that Blade of Rune King also building on Misting. I like the fact that he's building it here because he has this full magic damage team going on. So this Blade of the Ruined Coco is going to do a lot. But Contracts is, is not enough here. It's not enough. And... Uh, it's hard for Sneaky and Jensen to get in there and uh, auto-attack the right targets because the DPS race, they, they definitely lose it here. I love the fact that World Elite are recognizing their win conditions. They're not paying attention too much to the side waves. They recognize that they are stronger and they can play around the Nasher. They get the vision around Nasher at one time and they maintain it. And play crazy hard around it. And um, World Elite now. In a great position. I know they're not called World Elite anymore. But my god. World Elite is a beautiful name. They shouldn't have changed it. W-E. What, what does that mean? We? 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 Like. Come on. I don't like it. I think World Elite is a clutch name. It's a fantastic name. With that being said, you know, C9, they need to, like, look for picks in side lane. They need to look for some kind of picks somehow. Because right now, World Elite, if they can just keep playing this death ball, choke it on side lane because he has TP. Borky could potentially also go on side to just spread spread the word about Baron. Knocking on your door. Have you heard the word of Baron Nasher? And then C9 just tried to slam the door on this Baron's face, but it just doesn't work. He's too good of too good of a salesman. World Elite pushing through the front door with the message of Baron. Gorky jumps in to a trap, but it doesn't matter too much. World Elite are too beefy. They just walk in here, they have one CS and they go all the way. Like Corky's fucking massive as well. We didn't talk about that too much. Sneaky Get saved by the end here because the Gragas ultimate doesn't knock him back, but Jarvan just gets one shot at man. Jarvan gets smack a root, and the world elites are just too powerful now. The death ball is rolling. This is like Protoss. They got the Colossi, they got the upgrades, they got everything going on for them. And with the Baron, it forces C9 to group as well. And this is a situation where C9 are definitely stronger, and C9 managed to come back here. Classic LPL. I saw the Uzi I doing this yesterday too, where you kind of threw the game. And what are they doing here? Like, they are diving some t insanely, insanely deep. This is insanely deep. You know, this is this is the, the Mariana Grave deep. This is next level deep. This was way too deep from World Elite. Not much more to analyze here. Like, this, this is just walking in too deep, and the Nexus turrets are doing insane amounts of damage and Jensen gets to heal up, heal up back full and Coco taking the damage and then the ball swinging away for Jensen even though he trades in but uh, 3 for 2 that's something that C9 can be happy about Condi gets shot but uh, Ben catches it in the back <clears throat> okay C9 some 
Much needed breathing room. Contract is getting one shot at man. Engaging onto this is super hard. Super, super hard. Last was to finish on Kate. Let's see what he can do with this. Now, Kellen is level 15 and she's not that weak as well as a hero, like now with her crit. She's going to do great things, but Mystic just turns around and sniffs sniffs her once and she loses a lot of HP. Mystic, though, also lost plenty of it. And with this uh, Executioner's Calling, together with the Last Whisper, they're going to deny the Aran Sense the lifesteal, so Mystic might be able to fall. You know, the big thing here about Caitlyn and Kogma is that she, Caitlyn is buying crit, right? So Caitlyn get, getting more and more iron is going to mean a lot. And all of a sudden we might see the situation where C9 are just kiting World Elite as much as they can. They don't look for the engage, they don't look for the hard commit, they look for the kind of kiting situation. And this looks <laughs> very reminiscent to what we saw yesterday. Sure, C9 don't have a Nar uh, or a Soaz that can kite the Choga, but we got Choga getting caught here and this matters a lot, this matters big time. He gets chunked out. Ooh, all right, sneaky. Sneaky with the E, and then the trap shot onto Mystic. You know, sure, well, they have like this powerful death ball, but without uh, the Nasher, C9 aren't necessarily forced to group and uh, contest this. They can also play the game on side waves, and all of a sudden it's like a, a clash of styles here. And uh, the main thing for C9 is that when they are in teamfight situations or play for objectives, they just need to play the kiting, slow game, and just play around the f play around the cooldowns of World Elite. They don't have the best engage, they have the Gragas, and then just try to poke away and chip away at them. The hard part here, though, is that the difference between what Fnatic did yesterday against that Kogma composition is that, um, you know, the picks. This time around, C9 have the Javan and Shen, which are... Picks that are very reliant on just getting in there and getting dirty. You can't get dirty against these. These these guys are, they lived in the sewers for their entire life with these champion picks. You know, they are the dirtiest picks you can have. And you can't get in there and get dirty. It's just not possible. So you need to kite this away. It's also much harder against a Corky than it is against a Galio to uh, stay frisky and um, stay in a position where the enemy team is just uh, getting caught off. Impact is smashing away at uh, top turret, or the leads are just trying to shove through the base. They know that C9 is out of position. C9 committed for the position here on to the Elder Dragon, which uh, puts them in an awkward position. Sneaky is ulting, and she is half HP. Impact, no flash. Taunt lands on Condi. A lot of damage. Trap will follow up here. Condi flashes away before it triggers. Mystic with the W is walking forward, but he's very deep now, and oof, the Q... Cancels contracts. Contracts didn't have ultimate follow up here on Mystic. Mystic has both summoners. No big deal. Very interesting back and forth. Both teams now. C9 a bit unhealthy. And uh, the targets that uh, are unhealthy here in World Elite, they can regen. And then the redemption is being used for some HP here. Very hard situation because C9 don't want to face check this at all. It's very hard to face check this. The Choga Q is going to land and. If anything, you know, maybe C9 are forced to look for a trade here because it's hard to find an entry here against the World Elite. They are a group, they're the death bot that we've been talking about, and maybe they just need to commit to the trade. Because C9 walking up here, I feel like World Elite are going to get a free situation to just uh, turn around if they need to. They're running into the meat grinder right now, and the taunt lands on Condi, and C9 trying to play the kiting game, but it's very difficult. Mystic is reasoning up. I think he has a cooldown on W now. He used it to hit the Nasher. And um, C9, I definitely feel like they should have went for the Elder, but let's see if uh, World Elite have a chance to respond here. They have the Baron, Baron Rico, so it's going to go quite fast, but this Elder Drake is going to die quite quick too. Let's see if uh, 957 can come in and feast it, doesn't have it on cooldown, no flash either, and C9 is just going to pick it up for free. I guess uh, the outcome for C9 is um, definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's the same in the end. I told them to not try to go for Baron and just uh, go for the Drake first because it seemed like the safer play. But uh, this worked too, right? So who really cares?
The main thing is, would it have looked different if World Elite, instead of basing, they just tried to walk the long path into mid lane and then into Elder Dragon? <clears throat> Look at Cloud9 and their carry jungle style. The jungle with the extra percentage taken away from bot lane. Statistics, y'all. This graph is so, so useless for this game. Maybe they're pointing out, like, yeah, contracts. He usually is the high DPS jungler right here. That this time around, he's playing the Sandy Hawk job and then he's just uh, playing the tank for his team and he's trying to jump in there and do good. And he's not playing the graves, which is great. You know, that's the way to uh, push up the graph, right? Or show off the graph. Let's hope that was what happened. Jensen is uh, starting to buy his last item. Hopefully, uh, Banshee's Veil. Looking like a Banshee's Veil. Like, what else would you buy in this game? Usually, Baron buff lasts longer than Dragon. Well, not usually, but every time. But this time around... Elder Dragon was killed later than Baron, so they're gonna kind of stop working around the same time. Shia, Shia forces the flash. Condi is in deep. Condi is taking a lot of damage from them. Balls, the Anna's Torment, Voice are doing work. Impact is in deep now. No W on Impact. The Sneeze comes in, but Ben uses Ultimate once again to heal up to full. I want to see a healing done graph because this is crazy. All in sense, lifesteal, and you know, Janna. Healing so much, like I want to just see healing done. Like if Janna gets the statistic from Arden Sensor 2, this number will be crazy high. But right now, you know, see the, see the situation once again. C9 trying to go for this desperate engage, if find Condi. But then all of a sudden, Koma shows up and he's bashing away at the enemy team. Gragas with mid lands and uh, burning through Condi is quite hard. You know, Caitlyn was not in position to fall up on this. Look at the minimap, you can see Caitlyn and Lulu quite deep. I mean, the opposite of deep, they're quite far, they're quite. What is the opposite of deep? What is the opposite of deep? No idea. Put the comment down below. Smash that like button. Tell me what the opposite of deep is. Shallow? Is shallow? The opposite of deep. But that doesn't make sense to explain where Caitlyn Lulu was. Caitlyn and Lulu were far away from the engagement, they didn't have the damage to shut down Condi before he got away and healed up. Imagine if Caitlyn was there to put a trap or something, but uh, she wasn't. So Kogma was there earlier to the fight, started hitting the tanks earlier than Caitlyn, which put Caitlyn in a position where she just comes in here and she's sad that her their impact is slain. So Corky doesn't have flash, but uh, this most likely means that WE is just gonna walk in in here, take the inhibitor. Condi is gonna regen some HP up, and I'm sad that we're not seeing any banner of commands here. Would we'll love to see some banner of Coco. I think it would have created a lower side lane pressure, and I think um, World Elite definitely would have been in a position where they wouldn't be able to group just as much, and. Uh, I think it's a mistake. I think Banner of Command would have been like the, the winner here. Because what they, look at them. They're grouping up as five. They're a death ball. They're trying to hide in the Choga model that is as big as my fist right now. No, my, my fist is bigger than that. But you get my point. You know, it's, it's ma massive. You know, I don't have baby fists. We'll lead now chipping away at the tower. Boom. Alright, let's take a look at this. This thing is doing a lot of damage to the Blade Rune King and all of the... The things that are going on for him, but uh, what is it with Cho'Gats and getting caught, man? What, what, what is this? He's walking up to trying to hit the tower. He flashes away a bit too late. C9 can walk forward, but WE can just disengage and run after the Janna. Janna is also positioning very well in terms of making use of passive. I don't know. Ben's Janna is clutch, man. It's fucking on point. It's pristine. 
with uh, how he's playing it and using the abilities to the max. He's making sure that everyone gets the move speed and also healing completely with his ultimate. He's not just wasting it to pop people away like, <laughs> you know? And then he ults someone away and then he runs, you know? He's not doing that. He's doing the full thing. Ooh, you know, the crazy Janna skin, the, the weather forecast Janna. No flash on Corky, I think that could be an opening for C9. If anything, Choga being dead is also an opening, of course. They rack up a turret. The next objective is going to be the Baron that spawns in about two minutes. By my estimation. World lead once again, is going to play this game where they just run it down together with five and then just walk towards Nasher and force C9 to engage on them. This is 100% their play, they don't care about the waves anywhere, and um, the way C9 deal with this is they create pressure on the sidelines and uh, make it awkward for the leads. But ooh, Corky with the full build, sneezes once on Snicky like, with the earth. Snicky loses so much HP. We've been talking so much about Koma and Kayla, we didn't talk about Corky at all. Corky is doing a lot of... A lot of freaking damage right now. And I said that the Radiant Soul scales well, but nothing compared to, compared to Corky. Man, I'm still sad about this Banner of Command thing, because Banner of Command would have been clutch, man. Banner of Command would have been... <laughs> it would have been the way in here. They need side lane pressure, they need to put World Elite on the clock, they need to make sure that World Elite splits up. Banner of Command. It's like the number one divorce maker in all of America. Just Banner of Command. You know, you come home, your wife checking your phone, she sees a picture of Banner of Command, and she's like, who's this? Who's this? Bam, you lose half your own, what you own. Man of Command just takes your base, takes your everything. That's what it's about, man. Especially in this composition, it's very hard for Choga to just walk down there. It's like, oh, I'm going to take, kill the Banner of Command, the minion. Maybe I'll feast it, and that's the best thing I can do. You know, sure, that's fine. It's not that big of a deal, but, you know, eventually he's going to be caught with his pants down while he doesn't have feast for the right time, and you know, Feast doesn't necessarily one-shot it, and definitely takes some time for the comp here of World Elite to, to deal with it. Imagine if they had two, you know, Chogan would be able to go to both silence, and Koma would have been deep. C9 just playing the kiting game. They have a good position here for the Baron, though, but there's a big, big-ass wave up top that uh, Impact is going to want to surf here. But uh, as it stands right now, Impact is looking for TP situation more than anything. I don't know what he's doing. The top wave is so big. Like, the top wave is so massive. Contract is very low on HP, and he can't really use Iron Sense to life steal up. That's just not how the game works. He's not an AD carry. Okay, top wave is still big as, big as all hell. Jensen has a good position here to DPS. He can do the sneeze. Mystic is getting healed to full. From his Warlords and from his Ardent and also from Big Ben's ultimate. The wave up top still big as all hell. Impact ulted now into the fight. But the fight is disengaged on and 957 is regening with Swarmog's heart. No longer though. Impact's trying to walk in. The Impact W can be very clutch here and the Feast comes in and Contracts cannot steal it. Jensen was very low from the previous fight and it's very difficult for C9 to do anything here because WE is just so much stronger in the group situation. They just are. That's a fact. And C9 are playing this to the best ability. And looking at it, you know, I, I don't feel like they could have done much more. They're looking for the fight. And then, you know, they definitely lost the fight. They, they, they forced Mystic and used all their cooldowns. And then Jensen was pretty deep. He got auto three times by Kogma. And all of a sudden, he needs to run off, you know. And Contracts is too scared to go in. And rightfully so. And then Pax just tries to walk in here with his W. And Contracts just keeps flagging away at Baron. And. You know, but later just playing it very, very safe. And, 
You know what? Oh, speaking of safe, this is like giving the burglar the security code to your safe. This is not safe. She uh, just jumping in the dying. This means World Lee is going to waste a lot of time here. Shia. <laughs> what was that, man? <laughs> What's up with... What's up with LPL teams getting caught in quarterfinals? It was the same with EDG and RNG. This was not even getting caught. This was like... Alright, guys. You know, this was... This was some... This is... This is Leroy. It was Leroy Jenkins. Getting in there, man. Getting one popped. Not good stuff from Shia here, man. <laughs> what is well, he's just pre cleansing as well. Look at this. W Zen cleanses I think maybe cleanse the trap, I'm not sure, but yeah, he cleanses the trap. Maybe. I like Hurricane. Sneaky has Hurricane. Has one hundred percent crit. Sneaky's gonna start popping off here. If he can play around the cooldowns of Kogma, he can do good things, but Kogma this time around itemizing properly, no frozen mallet, no random omen, you know, he's just playing with his team, he's playing some crit, you know, he still can trade some blows with Kaelin back and forth, but, uh, you know, pure 1v1, I think uh, Kaelin wins, but that's what the game, the game is not about 1v1, it's all about positioning, and C9 have the superior one, when it comes to this Elder, and my goodness, C9 is going to take Elder Dragon, right off the bat, 957 is pretty deep. Aryan's soul gets silenced, his balls get sucked in. It's like being in a cold pool and Mystic walks into a trap. Holy clutch. Look at these look at this trap line that gets completely ignored here by by World Elite. And then when they kite backwards, they don't notice it. And Mystic here. Kaelin gets rooted. Insane. Insane trap line here by Sneaky that does a lot of work here and forces Mystic away. Jaina still on her ultimate, but she doesn't have an opportunity here to push a good one. She uh, flashes out. Let's take a step back and take a look at the situation here. Where C9 take position on the Baron. They walk up here, and uh, it's all about you know She inting it. Without She inting it, then all of a sudden World Leads are in the position where they got the Baron. Corky TP is in, but C9 already got the midway priority and they got the priority to the Elder Dragon. They place the traps. Wordly walk by the traps by walking through topside, but the Baron, like the Elder Dragon, calling a Baron all the time. Elder Dragon is falling very, very fast. Um, the Rook is doing a lot of damage, but it doesn't matter. Taunt. Trap line right here. You can see that uh, Sneaky also tried to trap under the Cho'Gath here. Didn't work out. And then boom, pow. Mystic gets uh, a trap shot. Janna gets a trap shot, does 1000 damage. Sneaky with the ultimate seeps through, hits Shia because he Valkyries and then flashes out of the freaking Javan ultimate. And C9 with the Elder Dragon, let's see what they can do. Probably not too much. World well, Elites are gonna just stall it out with their Baron. Maybe the top wave can be used for something. But usually you want to use Elder Dragon to just secure yourself Baron. But uh, this is the second time around we see. The objectives being traded, and uh, they're kind of they're gonna kind of cancel each other out. I'm gonna eat a grape to celebrate this beautiful. Trade off here. Did you guys know that grapes? Turn into trees from these small seeds that are inside the grapes that everyone thinks are so annoying you can freaking get a grape tree out of that stuff true story did it once and um, you know grapes can also be turned into raisins random facts back to the game world elite With this Baron buff going on, no inhibited turrets will fall. With this Elder Dragon, World Elite won't be able to push either, and we're back at step one. Caitlyn's super happy now, she has the full crit build, and Koma doesn't. Cork is also super happy. Everyone's super happy, you know, this is late game, full items. Maybe, maybe 
maybe the tanks aren't that happy because now the tanks are gonna melt. You know, this is like microwaved gouda cheese. They're gonna melt fast as all hell. We got them void staffs, got them last whispers. A big problem for Kogma why he falls off a bit late game is because of his build. And also because he can't really buy last whisper, can't buy a voice stuff. And usually this is a huge, huge power spike in terms of itemization because Kogma is like mixed damage. But it's not like uh, Kogma has an issue killing tanks most of the time. He does reduce people's MR and armor by spitting Q. I think it's called Caustic Spittle. Caustic Spittle? I don't even know how to pronounce it, man. I sound horrible when I say that, especially like with all the all the problems that are going down in my throat, you know, maybe you can hear that my voice is kind of, you know, I kind of, I think it's nasal is the word I'm looking for. Oh my goodness, fast forward a bit too much. Mystic, no flash. No source. Oh my goodness, it's so bad that Sneaky also dies here. He gets traded onto him and... Wow, like if Sneaky just lives here. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Like if Sneaky lives here, then they could potentially just end the fucking game. That's how huge it is. Condi's coming in now. No AD carries, no damage, but Corky is an AD carry though, but Corky... Still alive, Corky coming in now. Sold his boots for GA. Jensen pretty deep. Sneezes at the enemy team. Contract is EQing to save Jensen. Everyone stacked together on this plant. Good plant kill by Jensen. Safe, crisp. Oh my goodness, sneaky bro. Sneaky bro. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky W. Alright, so look at this now. So Mystic, he's in deep. Janna has ultimate, Janna has heal, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Uh, if Caitlyn does an auto. But Caitlyn, Caitlyn right here, she doesn't, she can just chill, you know. She can just put them traps, put traps and throw that Rapify cannon auto down. And don't get killed by Kogma, bro. That's what it's about, don't get killed by Kogma. Kogma was live seen a lot though, you know, it's like a big difference there. He's hard on censoring it up on a lot of people with the hurricane and Lulu is on the like he's only hard on censoring up on one target while 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 Kogma is getting healed by three people. And the wall is bloodlust and a lot of lifesteal items here as well. Condi very low, but Condi has done a fantastic job of getting into the fights and then getting out at the right time. Condi is also running around always always running around the fights with low HP after he's been in. You know, he's playing the tank role quite well. His team gets to DPS and Jensen just gets freaking demolished. Look at Kogma with his crit build. My goodness, this was something that was missing yesterday in Uziah's build. I think this Randwin's Omen is outdated, man. But right now, like, what is the plan for C9? They're in deep. Sneaky has summoners. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky with, no, with the flash. You know, what is it up with NAAD carries and not using their flash? Crazy stuff in World Elite, you know. After that good early game from C9, I think uh, a big problem for them was that they didn't really rotate their pressure into the other lanes. Kogma reached breaking points and World Elite played to their win, uh, win objective, uh, like win condition very well. They played in that group scenario. I think Banner of Command was the way in here for C9 later on in the game, but there was no Banner of Command to be found. And World Elite uses that ball composition to win game one. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bless your face. Take care.